And next, we're going to talk about adjusting the output video. So uh, you can go into video output. And for any of the seven outputs, you have different options. Um, you can change the color space between YUV and uh, RGB. Yeah, put that back on the default there. You have, um, for compatibility, um, you may, in some situations, need to change the HDMI signal to be a DVID signal on the HDMI cable. Um, you will lose embedded audio if you do that, but um, that's um, helpful for uh, some rare troubleshooting uh, situations. Brightness, contrast, saturation, RGB values, and uh, record control to uh, trigger an Atomos recorder. Um, you can enable and disable that for individual outputs. You have some a uh, few less options for the SDI um, uh, due to the uh, nature of this format. Um, you for 3G SDI. So when we talk about 1080p 5994, uh, not 1080i, uh, 3G SDI mapping. You can choose between level A and level B for compatibility. Um, but in most cases, you can leave that at the default value and brightness, contrast, and saturation. So um, that's how you can process the SDI outputs. And for USB, uh, for troubleshooting, you can do a connection reset um, if you're having any connection issues, as well as get the uh, output status um, where you can see if the USB connection is uh, fast enough. If you remember in the first video, I mentioned that some USB Type-C cables are for charging uh, phones. So uh, reach out to me to get um, recommendations for a USB-C cable that's uh, fast enough for streaming HD video. And for the input video, you're going to go to the video input menu. And for, say, like this uh, HDMI uh, input, you can check the status for a connected signal. Um, I'll show you one for one of the SDIs that's connected. You can do a horizontal or vertical flip of that input brightness, contrast, and saturation control for the input before it reaches the output. And for the scaler, you're going to see more options, the EDID, which I showed earlier, as well as um, you can zoom uh, in and out, choose the uh, scaling type. And uh, I left this out during the me talking about the menu, but a little trick is if you push and twist, it goes much faster um, if you're trying to quickly dial in like a number setting. You can also choose the scaling type and the position of the video. And then you have uh, the expanded uh, red, green, and blue controls for HDMI. And SDI here, you can see you can still flip horizontally or vertically. And when you look at the input status, you can see more information about that source. Um, input status is very helpful for troubleshooting. Um, if a source does not appear for some reason, uh, you can check that in the video input menu uh, to troubleshoot it. To assign a video bus to an output connector, we're going to go back into that video output menu. And um, you can see here, I take that back. We're going to go to the video assign menu, number one. So we go to video assign, and you're going to scroll to page two. And you can see here that all the different output buses, these are the defaults here. So there's program, preview, multi-view. Remember, HDMI 3 is a copy of this LCD screen. Uh, the USB out, the SDI outs. So you can do program, sub-program, which is like a remix of program with relation to picture-in-picture in picture and the DSK layers. Um, there's preview, the aux bus that I mentioned earlier. So if you want to like feed um, a still image or um, graphics, full-screen graphics to say like a projector, um, you know, that's a great way to do that. And it's a clean output that you can independently switch. Uh, there's the multi view, the 16 input view that I showed you earlier, as well as the 16 still image view. So a lot of options for what each output can be. Um, you may want to, in some s situations, have like HDMI output 3 be a multi view, and then HDMI output 2 be the 16 input view. So you can see all those active inputs um, that are connected to the V160. You know, if you have additional cameras that you want to, you know, sub in with uh, with memory presets, you know, different cross point configurations. Again, this is a very open ended switcher in terms of its capabilities and what you can do with it. Um, so there's definitely uh, ways that you can get creative with uh, the routing of the video sources. And to select the video that's sent to the aux bus, you simply just have the mode set to aux, and then you would just switch this so cross point four is fed to any uh, aux output. So let's say like I have, you know, SDI output two is aux being fed to a projector. Um, so then whatever 
this source is, you know, I can just choose it here and um, then it's, you know, fed out. If you have a copy protected video, uh, like a Blu-ray player, um, you can enable pass through via HDMI by turning on HDCP in the system menu. Just note that it's going to disable the SDI and USB outputs as part of HDCP compliance, complying with that copy protection. But if you do need to mix cameras in a Blu-ray player and um, uh, you don't mind working with uh, just HDMI outputs, then you can enable HDCP here and do that. And there's also a GenLock, the reference clock. So there's an internal reference, or you can set it to an external reference, one of the SDI connectors. I'm not going to go into this. If you have any questions about it, just reach out to me, and um, I can get those questions answered for you.